Thank you for joining today's RBA training session, which will cover the RBA calendar. My name is Jason. So the first thing I'm going to do in RB is, of course, I'm going to log in. So what we're going to be looking at today is the RBA calendar. The main calendar function in RB8 is called the Calendar Manager. You can get to the Calendar Manager by clicking on the Quick Launch icon in the toolbar up here at the top, or you can get to the function by clicking on your Calendar menu and selecting Calendar Manager or clicking F2 on your keyboard. This is where you'll go to look up all your jobs that you've put into RB8, and this is where you'll also go to input all of your new jobs into RB8. Okay, so we basically we give you three different views of your calendar. We'll give you a list view, we'll give you a weekly view, and we'll give you a monthly view. We're going to start with the list view. So first we're going to talk about using the calendar manager to search and pull up jobs that you've already put into the system. Now you'll have your search criteria on the left hand side. And as you can see, if I scroll down here, we give you a lot of them. Okay. So one of the nice things you can do with the RB8 is you'll be able to mix and match any of the search criteria. So one of the things I could do in here is I could throw in a date filter range. I could say job date from. Click my drop down here and select a beginning date. Let's go back to the beginning of June. And let's say I want to go to select my job date to field and go to the end of the year, December 31st. Okay, so I have a filter in there for job date from and to. Now let's say I also want to put in a filter for a firm. I only want to pull up jobs for a specific firm. So I'll click my look up firm button here. My search window will appear. And now I'm going to type in any part of the firm name and click enter and select them. So now I have two filters in here, and if I click search, what the system will do is it'll search for that particular uh, criteria, and it will display all those jobs in a list view. So if you really needed to, you could throw in other filters. Like I could take in throw in more filters for status. Like let's say I only wanted to pull in build jobs, and you can research the data, and again, RB will filter. So that's one of the things that RB will do that's nice as far as the uh, search criteria go. But let's go back to the... Um, job status all setting here. Initially when you look at the results that show up in the list view, the first thing you will notice is the color coding that appears for the text. So again, one of the things you can do is you can decide uh, which colors correspond with which job status. And if you weren't here for the setup training, uh, you select those colors under tools, system preferences, and it's going to be under the first tab that appears job status. Basically you just click a color next to the status and you pick the color you want to appear as the uh, color for the status. A little tip for you guys is I would not choose a color like yellow, something very bright, because on a white background, as you can imagine, it is hard to see. The list view itself, when looking at it, is a straight list of jobs, hence the name list view. You can scroll to the right. You will have more columns over to the right, okay? And all these columns, you can move them around, okay? So again, keep in mind, if you want to, is can be beneficial for you because you may like your grids to look a certain way with the columns set a certain way. So if you move them around, you can manipulate it the way you're actually viewing it. When you actually close the function or go home for the day when you come in tomorrow, RB will retain those settings, how you last looked at it. So that's the list view. So let's go over to the weekly view. The weekly view is just like it sounds. Basically, it's a weekly view of your calendar. So we'll always default it to the current week, and we'll always highlight the current day in orange. And on each given day, we'll show you how many jobs you have. The little color over to the right, these are going to be your color codings for the status. And see if you actually put your mouse pointer over a job, we'll actually show you some of the job details, the job number, the date, the time, the case, the client, the witness, and location. Go to the previous week by clicking the left arrow, the next week by clicking the right arrow. And again, you do have your search criteria if you do want to filter. Let's go over to the last tab, and this one is called Monthly View. That's a very simple, quick, month-at-a-glance view of your calendar. Again, we default it to the current month, and we highlight the current day in orange again. And on each given day for this particular month, we'll show you how many jobs you actually have. What we'll show you is the first number that will represent how many jobs you actually have in total that day. And in the parentheses, this number represents out of that first number how many of them are actually canceled. So in this example, I have three jobs, zero are canceled. I like this one the most because again, it's simple. Once you click on a day, the data down below changes. So any day you click, the data will change, so we'll show you those jobs. If you wanna to go to the previous month, click the left arrow. The next month, click the right arrow. And again, you do have your search criteria. 
So from any one of the tabs, if you did see a job that you wanted more details on, all you have to do is double click the job with your left mouse button and it'll open up the full job details so you can get whatever information you needed or update any information if needed. So that's using the calendar manager to actually search and look up jobs that you've already input. Now let's talk about creating new jobs in the RBA calendar. Now from any one of the tabs, it doesn't matter where you are, it's all the same process. All you do is right click and select new. Right click, select new. They all do the same thing. If I select new, your new job window will appear. So let's go through setting up a new job in RB8. So the first place we want you to start is with the contact field. Notice this field is blue. This is the required field. This is where we want you to start. The contact on the job stands for the ordering attorney on the job. So what we want you to do here is not to try to type in. These are grayed out fields, so you can't type anything in. What we want you to do is to search and select the ordering attorney on the job. So in order to do that, what you need to do is you need to click your lookup contact button over to the right, and your lookup window will appear. And here, basically, you'll have two options. A, you can search by the display name. So I would just type in any part of the ordering attorney's name. So I could say Stratford for David Stratford, and he'll appear. Now, if you're new to RBA, a lot of times when you do your searching, they may not appear because they may not be in the system yet. Well, keep in mind here, if they do not appear, if you search and you do not find the result, you can click new and you can add somebody on the fly. So you don't actually have to get out of this function, go to the context function, add them, and then come back here and, and actually search for them. You can do it all on the fly, create them and go. Let's go ahead and select David Stratford. So highlight them, click select. And so basically the uh, firm name will populate, the contact will populate, and the phone numbers. Okay, that all comes from what's selected. The little yield symbol here, this is your warning. So here we have the firm warning. Okay, do not send Susan Lloyd. If I had a contact warning, there would have been a little symbol here as well. Now let's go down to the ordered by field. This is basically who is calling in the job, the secretary or paralegal. Now if I pull the drop down, you'll notice I have Jane and Kelly's name already specified here. But also keep in mind, you can type something in on the fly if you want. But it is beneficial to link the actual secretaries and paralegals to the attorneys that they work for. That way you can simply use the drop down menu and select who ordered the job with you guys. In the setup training, we did talk about that, so you can refer to our setup training uh, to be able to tie secretaries and paralegals to the attorneys that they work for. So in my example, I'm going to choose Kelly Arnold. If Kelly would have had an email address in her setup, this ordered by email field would have populated with Kelly's email address. So if it does not, that means Kelly did not have one in my example. But you can type anything in here uh, that you wish. It will accept uh, multiple email addresses. Just separate them with a comma. All right, job date. The job date is the date of the depot, self-explanatory. So let's make this one for, um, let's just say, November 16th. And job time, we'll choose a start time. We'll say it's going to start at 9 a.m. And we'll say it's going to go to uh, 11 a.m. Time zone, you can choose your time zone. Your default is selected. If you don't have a default here, if yours actually comes in looking like this, keep in mind you can choose your default under Personal, User Preferences. Under the Jobs tab, you can select your default. Every workstation will need to do that. That will pre-populate those fields for you so you don't have to select them every single time. So I'll go back to Pacific Time and check Adjust Clock for Daylight Savings Changes.